So I was looking at my keyboard and my shift key looks stupid. So let's make a new one. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Colby Jack and today we're gonna to be working with resin and making a new shift key for my keyboard. As always, we're gonna start off by grabbing the mold. I got these molds on eBay for about 20 bucks and it has every type of key on my keyboard, so it's pretty cool. But for this project, we're only gonna need the shift key. Now, to verify that I was actually using the right one, as you can see, I fit the shift key into the mold before actually starting the project. This way I don't grab the wrong key and accidentally do like an enter key or something. I was able to buy these platings from Hobby Lobby. This whole pack was only about $5 and I think they look really, really cool. For this project, I like bronze, so I want to experiment with that. As far as other items you'll need, of course you want to grab some resin. You'll also need a cup to mix it all in and something to mix it with. I want to give a huge thanks to a YouTube channel that goes by the name of Cool Rice Bunnies. She commented on my video, which by the way, thank you so much. But she said something along the lines of, to get a batch of resin to cure properly, you need a minimum amount to mix together. That way you don't overdo in either part A or part B. Did I correct it off of this advice? No, but it's something to keep in mind in the future. But once again, thank you for the advice and you guys should definitely go follow her. I know this video is gonna get like four views, but all four of you should go subscribe to her. She makes really, really good content, and all of her projects are just so adorable. I'll make sure to leave a link down in the description below. So, um, when mixing resin together, I'd recommend being careful, because when I used the spoon, which is a very large surface area, it put a lot of bubbles in the mixture, and this happened. So I ended up creating another batch, and this time I used my syringe to mix it up. It's a little bit better. The bubbles are a little bit bigger, but there are a lot less of them, and it'll be easier to pull those out. Now, I'd say this is arguably the most important step when making resin keycaps. You need to make sure that the stems look good. In fact, I have a prime example of why this is so important at the end of this video, but that's a little bit of foreshadowing. My advice is to take something like this syringe or a toothpick and to start on one side of the stems and then let the resin slowly fill in from the bottom up. Otherwise you can trap bubbles down there and that will create massive holes and create a really loose fitting keycap. Even if you do do this, it's still very important to wiggle these molds to make sure that all the bubbles get out. You don't want anything trapped underneath there. That will absolutely ruin the keycap. Now for the fun part. We get to work with this foil. I started by just transferring it into the mold and then pushing it down to make sure that it wasn't leaking over any of the edges. Now, the smart thing to do is to slowly let your resin trickle in, filling from the bottom up to make sure that no bubbles form, but I don't have much patience, so I ended up just pouring it all in. It was okay though. After this, you're going to want to take your toothpick or syringe and move everything around, making sure that there are zero bubbles in the bottom. I know I keep harping on this, but it is very important. The effect I was going for was more of like broken leaves almost, so I decided to break up the foil into a bunch of small pieces, and honestly, I think it turned out looking really, really cool. Here I'm also making sure to grab that foil and drag it out to the edges so we don't just have one big clump in the center. 
Now you're going to want to let your mold sit for approximately 10 to 15 minutes to let any bubbles from the bottom rise up to the top. Make sure you pop them and then you're ready to put the molds together. Squish it down just enough so there's a little bit of overflow but make sure you don't push it down too hard where you squeeze all the resin out and then you don't have a keycap. I had all this extra resin from my first batch and most of the bubbles had risen to the top at this point so I decided to make three just clear keycaps, but those didn't turn out too great. You'll see that at the end. Now it's time to demold. As you can see I actually got a decent setup this time. It was just like a $10 setup from Walmart but it really really helped filming so that's kind of cool. As soon as I pulled the top off of these keycaps I knew something was wrong. As you can see, the stems are pretty much non-existent. This is due to the fact that I just didn't put much effort into the stems. And as I had said before, this is a pretty important step, so make sure you don't skip it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, with the exception of the fact that these don't have stems and there's a lot of bubbles, I kind of like this clear keycap look, and it kind of gave me an idea for another video, which I might have already started filming at the time of recording this, but yeah, I, I think I want to try something with this. Now for the part we've all been waiting for, time to demold my copper keycap. Okay, this looks super cool. I was so happy with the way this turned out. There was a beautiful glossy finish on it. There weren't even many bubbles in there. There was a couple teeny tiny ones when you looked close, but, but it turned out really good. The stems also looked quite amazing. I was surprised because there were a decent amount of bubbles in those molds. No big ones, so I knew it would work, but they turned out to be pretty clean. Now the keycap was bent a little bit, and this is probably due to my room being either too hot or too cold, but it wasn't that big of a deal. It was still somewhat flexible, so I was able to bend it back into place, and it was looking straight in no time. Next, I just grabbed my little pocket knife and shaved off all the little scraggly bits on the edge. This is just to give it a little bit of a cleaner look and have it ready for my keyboard. All in all, I'm super proud with how this turned out. I think it looks so cool. Now we just need to see what it looks like on my keyboard. Now, here's when I noticed a little bit of a problem. It was extremely loose, but I do have an idea how to fix this. So to prevent this from happening, a really smart thing I could have done is to take it out after about 24 hours of hardening and then put it on the keyboard to settle the rest of the way around those stems, but I didn't do that, so I'm gonna have to think of another way. If I were to just take a tiny bit of resin on a toothpick and dip it down inside of those stems and maybe thicken it just a little bit, it might have a slightly better grip. So I might be doing that in an upcoming short. I haven't started it yet, but I'll make sure to show you guys that process. So I waited another 24 hours and just kind of let it settle. It got a little bit stiffer, but I do still think I'm going to try that toothpick method. I'll make sure to release a short on this channel, so if you want to see it, make sure you like and subscribe this video so you can be notified when that one comes out. All in all, I'm really happy with how this turned out. 
If you guys have any ideas for other keycaps I could make, make sure you leave those down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching until the end, and I will see you in the next video. Once again, thank you to Cool Rice Bunnies for leaving the comment on my last video helping me out and giving me all that advice. I'll make sure to leave her channel in the description, so go subscribe to her.